KCAL News Mornings. The dog did alert, indicating the presence of a body uh, somewhere underneath the house. Breaking news, a tragic turn in the search for a missing couple who vanished from a nudist ranch in San Bernardino County. Welcome to KCAL News at 1130. I'm Rudy Bey Shabazi. Let's go right to assignment manager Mark Liu with an update that just came in minutes ago. Mark. Yeah, Rudy Bey, Redlands police believe they are getting closer to locating at least one of the bodies of Dan and Stephanie Menard who have been missing since last Saturday. They are now presumed dead, according to police describing them as the victims of foul play. Now, these are photos of Dan and Stephanie Menard, a couple in their 70s that were last seen about a week ago at a home in the Olive Dell Ranch Nudist Resort in San Bernardino County. Family and friends had become concerned when they, along with their small dog, didn't show up to scheduled events. Redlands police began an investigation, later determined they may have been the victims of foul play. Now, yesterday, while searching for the couple, police got a tip that a potential suspect was at a home in the same area the Menards went missing. This turned into a standoff with police that lasted hours, and police and SWAT ended up taking apart this home and later taking a suspect into custody. He was located underneath that home, they say. They've identified him as 62-year-old Michael Roy Sparks. Now, today, Redlands police say a cadaver dog searched this wreckage here and alerted its handlers that it detected at least one body somewhere under that rubble. Now, police and city crews have yet to make access. They are working to make sure that area is safe. As you can see here, there's a lot of rubble and debris. They say it may take hours, but not days, to clear away this and access the area where the cadaver dog detected the body. Now, Rudabay as to a motive or how the suspect is connected to the Menards. Police haven't said yet, but they do say the suspect isn't talking and has requested an attorney. That is the very latest here from the desk. I'll send it back to you. All right, Mark, thank you. A possible road rage incident in the San Fernando Valley. Police were called to the southbound 101 freeway at Tampa, where they discovered an overturned motorcycle that may have been involved with a gray Tesla this morning. Witnesses called 911 to report the Tesla driver was trying to run over the motorcyclist. One of them claimed to have dash cam video of the incident. The motorcycle rider suffered a compound fracture to his left leg. A burglar stopped right in his tracks in Winneka after the homeowner fought back and stabbed him. KCAL News reporter Luz Delia Caballero has a look at the security video. The homeowner's son telling us his dad did what he needed to do in order to keep his family safe and protect them when that intruder broke into their home. We want to show you some security camera footage that was captured as that intruder tried to get in, tried a couple of times, and then was successful knocking over that camera. We're told police responded to a hot prowl call just after 4 o'clock this morning after a male suspect in his 20s broke into a home in this Winneka neighborhood while four people were inside. Joseph Santos tells us the suspect went to the master bedroom upstairs where his mom and dad were, and that's when there was an altercation between his dad and the suspect. His father ended up stabbing the intruder, who we understand eventually stumbled out where he was arrested and taken to the hospital in stable condition. We're a super close family, so it's, you know, we're all we have, you know, and um, he needed to do what he had to do, and, you know, uh, it resorted to, like, violence, but, you know, uh, I'm just glad that they didn't get injured. The suspect was on my property. I heard at night someone was walking on my roof. My thoughts is uh, everybody has a right to defend himself or his family. And at least one other neighbor told us the suspect hopped into her backyard. You're actually looking at the footage. Her security cameras captured at around 4 o'clock in the morning. You can see him in her backyard, then go to the front of her home, trying to get in through the front door. When he was unsuccessful, he, of course, eventually ended up at the home where he broke in, was stabbed, later arrested and taken to the hospital in stable condition. Reporting in Winneka, Luz Delia Caballero, KCAL News. One of two doctors charged in after Matthew Perry's death will appear in court today. Dr. Mark Chavez is accused of conspiring to distribute ketamine, the drug that killed Perry. Chavez has agreed to plead guilty to a conspiracy charge, but will enter will not enter that plea today. Rather, the Associated Press reports he made the deal with prosecutors to help convict two others charged in the case. Perry's assistant and an acquaintance are also cooperating.
Let's take a live look now at LAX. Millions planning to squeeze out the last bits of summer by taking to the skies nationwide. So far, the LAX horseshoe is looking pretty good. It was pretty busy earlier this morning. It comes and goes. According to Flight Aware, there have been 97 delays into and out of LAX and six cancellations. The TSA says it has had a record summer and expects to screen nearly 2.9 million people today alone. AAA says Seattle is the top domestic destination this holiday, in part because of sold-out Alaskan cruises departing from there. And if you'll be hitting the road this weekend, here's a look at the average gas prices in Southern California. Ventura County is at 467 a gallon, LA County at 458, Orange County 450, and the least expensive gas can be found in the Inland Empire at 447. And what can you expect if you're sticking around for the holiday weekend, as you should be? Meteorologist Paul <laughs> Diano has the details. I mean, look where we live. Why not, Paul? Uh, why not? Just go to the airport and pick up some friends or family and, and just hang out here. If you like it hotter, the end of this holiday weekend will have temperatures running 5 to 10 degrees warmer than average. Then feel that way outside this morning. It was cloudy. It was chilly. Many of us dropped into the 50s, even low 50s overnight. And Long Beach, now the sun is finally coming out, and it's only 69 degrees at the airport. The view from Mount Wilson much better than it was a couple hours ago. We were looking down on cloud cover over many of our inland valleys. Not the case right now. We have mostly sunny skies. That said, clouds are not completely clear yet. Along the 5 and the 405, as you hop over from L.A. County south into Orange County, it's still cloudy, and our beaches in southern Orange County and north San Diego County are still cloudy. It is not completely clear yet. And temperatures, because of this stronger onshore breeze, not that warm. Camarillo 71, Burbank 71, Fullerton 71, 75 in Simi Valley, 76 in Riverside, 69 degrees. That's it for Santa Ana. Now hop over the mountains where it's been sunny all day. Antelope Valley, low 90s, Lancaster 91. You're going up to 102 there today. Here's Temecula throughout the afternoon. Your average high is in the low 90s today, mid 80s. So I know we have a warm up coming. It is not here today. Inland Empire, warmest spots 93. Slight chance of a mountain thunderstorm with a high of 80, 75 at our beaches, 82 in Los Angeles. Today will end all the talk about cooler weather. We start warming up this weekend. We will not stop until next week. We'll have the extended forecast route Bay coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Paul. Heads up if you're heading to the beach for Labor Day. Parts of Roger, Will Rogers State Beach and the Pacific Palisades are closed for the foreseeable future. The L.A. County Department of Public Health says untreated sewage is entering the ocean, raising bacteria concerns. Affected areas include a half mile north and south of the beach at Sunset Boulevard. Officials will test water conditions later today. And now to campaign 2024. We are now 67 days until Election Day. Both presidential nominees are working to clarify their stances on some hot button issues. Natalie Brand has the latest. Let's be clear, my values have not changed. In her first major interview as the Democratic presidential nominee, Vice President Kamala Harris was pressed on some of her policy shifts over the years, including signaling during the primary in 2019 she supported a ban on fracking. No, and I made that clear on the debate stage in 2020, that I would not ban fracking, as vice president, I did not ban fracking. As president, I will not ban fracking. It's an issue central to voters in battleground Pennsylvania, where former President Donald Trump holds a rally later today. The Republican ticket has also slammed Harris and President Biden for record crossings at the southern border last year. Harris was asked in the CNN interview about how her views there have changed. I believe there should be consequence. We have laws that have to be followed and enforced that address and deal with people who cross our border illegally. The Republican nominee is facing questions from conservative groups about his own evolving stances. In an NBC News interview, Trump suggested Florida's six-week abortion ban is too restrictive. I think the six week is too short. Uh, it has to be more time. With Harris holding a sizable advantage among female voters, Trump appears to be looking for ways to cut into that lead. He made this announcement on Thursday. Your government will pay for or your insurance company will be mandated to pay for all costs associated with IVF treatment. Tonight, Trump speaks to the conservative group Moms for Liberty. Natalie Brand, KCAL News. California's efforts for greener energy hit a new milestone. It's the first in the nation. But first, it's a murder case that got national attention because of a podcast. And now there's a new major twist for Adnan Syed.
Developing news now, Maryland's Supreme Court has upheld an appellate court's decision to reinstate the murder conviction of Adnan Syed. In 2022, a judge threw out Syed's conviction for the murder of his ex-girlfriend, Hay Min Lee, in 1999. But Lee's brother successfully appealed. Maryland's Supreme Court agreed with the lower court that there were procedural errors in how the conviction was removed. The justices found that the circuit court violated the rights of Lee's brother because he wasn't given proper notice to attend the proceedings in person. Syed can remain free as the case now heads to a lower court. The case did gain national attention in 2014 when it was featured on the first season of the Serial podcast. The federal government is cutting L.A. a check for nearly $22 million to help house migrants. The city made itself a sanctuary for migrants arriving in the U.S., but has had a tough time finding them homes. Many have been set up at the Union Rescue Mission on Skid Row. Others have pitched tents on sidewalks. The Department of Homeland Security's check is a part of a $380 million fund to remove shelter, provide shelter rather, for the less fortunate across the country. Governor Gavin Newsom continuing his push to make California cleaner and greener. Today, he joined state and federal officials in Northern California to unveil the nation's first hydrogen hub. So what is that? The hub will facilitate a network of clean, renewable hydrogen production sites to cut fossil fuel use throughout California with the ultimate goal of decarbonizing public transportation, heavy duty trucking and port operations. Well, I want to thank uh, all of our partners. It is an extraordinary thing. There's an old African proverb, some of you heard me say, says if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. Uh, and that's the spirit that I think defines uh, this announcement. He's stepping up uh, to advance our commitments. Seven regional clean hydrogen hubs will eventually be built nationwide. The program was established through a multi-billion dollar investment from the Biden administration. Celebrating forgotten stories, a new boutique hotel in Venice Beach is offering visitors a glimpse back at the history of the famed coastal neighborhood. KCAL News reporter Rick Montanez shows us how the themed business is honoring the vibrant creation of Venice. Just off the shore at Venice Beach, a newly renovated building. What was once an apartment home to a black family for decades is now the red line an apartment hotel with a historical theme. This is an area that it's, it, it needs to be preserved, and one of the ways to preserve it is to have other people be interested in it. Kamak Coleman came up with the concept after learning the history of Venice, specifically of its first black resident, Arthur Reese, who worked as town decorator for the man behind Venice, Abbott Kinney, in the early 1900s. This piece on the wall is one of our kind of quintessential pieces. Uh, it talks about the redlining, and you can in fact see the redlining that occurred here at the beach in Venice. The hotel's name, a nod to the discriminatory practice of withholding loans and financing to minorities to keep them out of specific neighborhoods. An opportunity to take a concept like redlining uh, that has been historically very, very painful, has cost a group of people you know, billions of dollars in lost equity and generational wealth, and now repurpose it in a way that that feels good, that's inspirational, that puts us in locations that historically we were not uh, able to own it. Michael Clinton is co-founder. He and Coleman are two of the four partners that run what they say is the only black owned hotel in Venice. Each of the four suites carefully decorated with artwork and archival photos. It really is a dream. That was my intention to create a sanctuary, a safe space for people to come and create. We are such unique people in what we bring to this project. We all have a different flavor and you can see that as every suite has a little bit of us in each of it. Four partners, four perspectives with a passion to preserve LA's history, even the troubling aspects. All this while showcasing black musicians, artists, and residents who shaped it. You wonder why it's unique. You wonder why it's funky, why it's cool, why it's so welcoming, why it's so transformational. Um, it's because we were there in the beginning when, when they were creating it. I just don't think you are able to move forward uh, if you don't understand where you come from. In Venice, Rick Montanez, KCAL News. Here's something that'll save you some money. California's final free fishing day of the year is tomorrow, and that means anyone can fish throughout the state without a fishing license. That includes beaches, lakes, streams, and rivers. Prices are usually about $20 for the day and $60 for the year. Kids 15 and younger can fish for free every day of the year.
UCLA and USC will soon kick off a new era of college football. The changes you need to know about. Plus smoothies made with animal parts, costing customers an arm and a leg at an upscale supermarket. Avengers Reserve is a new shopping destination dedicated to the fandom and stories of Earth's mightiest heroes. It opens this winter, and so does Marceline's Confectionery. That will feature churro coffee, lollipops, and caramel apples. Sounds pretty good, but if it's a full meal you're looking for, there are two new restaurant concepts, a full-service steakhouse and a quick-service barbecue eatery. For shoppers, the D-Lander is offering Disney clothes with a California flavor. And tomorrow is a big day for college football with just about everyone's favorite team back in action. Fans will also see some big changes this year. For the first time in the postseason, 12 teams will compete for the national championship with four schools getting a first round bye in the single elimination tournament. The Big Ten Conference also has a new look, adding four powerhouse teams, UCLA, USC, Washington, and Oregon. And then keep it locked on CBS LA Channel 2 for the Bruins season opener. UCLA heads to Hawaii to kick off and it's at 4.30 tomorrow. Then stick around after the game for a special edition of Sports Central. We'll get live reports from our Jill Painter Lopez from Honolulu. And let's turn it over now to meteorologist Paul Deano for your ever important holiday weekend weather forecast. Yeah, think about those guys that have to travel, guys and girls, so much more now being in that conference where most of the teams are back east and the weather's not going to be as nice there. Weather here for the holiday weekend is going to be beautiful and sunny. It is not sunny in some locations right now. Malibu's one of them. Still cloudy at the beach, 65 degrees. We've got the sunshine, but uh, that ocean influence is still there with reduced visibility near downtown Los Angeles. It's only 72. Anywhere close to the beach, like within 10 or 15 miles, upper 60s, low 70s. It's not that warm outside, but I'm telling you right now, today is going to be the coolest afternoon of the next two weeks. There is a prolonged warm to hot spell that's going to move in starting this weekend. It's only 71 right now in Burbank and also Fullerton. But look at where we're going. By this time next week, it will not be 82. It will be 15 degrees hotter, up to 97 by next Thursday. What about this weekend? We're going to warm up each day. 90 degrees by Labor Day in Los Angeles. For our valleys, as hot as 105 coming up next week, 100 by Sunday, so things are going to be changing and getting much hotter even this weekend. Inland Empire, 93 today, 100 by Labor Day. Ruta Bay, back to you. Paul, thank you. And now to LA's latest status symbol, smoothies that come with a steep price. Erewhon Supermarket is getting flooded with A-listers and just about everyone else hoping to get a sip of the tasty treats. Kick out News reporter Joy Benedict has the story. It's become a symbol of health and status. Here at one today, we're going to be making my new smoothie. With celebrity collaborators and influencer posts, the Air One smoothie has hit social media by storm. This is what dreams are made of. Oh, God. This is probably one of the best Air One smoothies I've ever had. A blend of praise for the taste and satire over the price. This smoothie was literally $1,000, but it's worth every penny. This is absolutely a $22 smoothie. This smoothie better be infused with vibranium. And for those sipping, I IRL. It's like so expensive, right? But it's amazing. And like Haley Bieber killed that. There's a new smoothie every month, and August is for Gorgie, the energy drink. They don't have anything like it. This is the first ever energy drink smoothie at Erewhon. A new collaboration with its Paradise Punch, frozen mango, coconut water, and flair. We have 150 milligrams of green tea caffeine. We also have biotin, B vitamins, and no artificial sweeteners. Another addition this summer. This one is has animal parts in it. Dr. Paul's raw animal based smoothie complete with beef organs and blueberries. Okay, you can't taste any animal organs. Thank God. Also, you know, it's very unique because he takes pre-dried organs then put that inside of a smoothie with honey and organic berries and it's an amazing type. Jason Widener is the vice president of the Los Angeles company and smoothie maker. Smoothies is one of those things that when you get functionality and you get organic produce and you marry those together, you get something magical. Erwan is an organic grocer based in L.A. for the last 50 years. And since it's only here, the online craze has made it a destination spot for visitors, if only for just a sip. You just feel cooler holding this guy, just holding it. Like you just feel like it's like a purse, like an expensive purse. Another emblem of the City of Angels. Local ingredients being savored for flavor, wellness, and of course, the brand. I hate that I like it. Joy Benedict, KCAL News. 
The boba boom in the U.S., another drink to talk about. You probably had or heard of the bubble tea. The Taiwanese drink first emerged in the 80s. It's traditionally made of black tea, milk, and boba, those iconic tapioca balls. More coffee and juice shops are adding the pearls to their drinks, and now bubble tea has become a $2.6 billion business in the U.S. The taste and the palate of Americans are changing. Just much more international kind of uh, awareness. And I think that has helped the boba industry. And according to Yelp, the number of boba cafes across the U.S. has skyrocketed almost 50 percent over the last few years. Thanks for watching KCAL News at 1130. KCAL News at noon with Amy Johnson is next. Now you can get your KCAL News weather and live stream all in one place on the CBS News app. Download it free today.